So brain is perhaps the most complex organ of our body. If not the body, probably the whole universe. There's really nothing more complex. The way we think, listen, speak, feel, emotions, recall memory, everything is done by this 1.5 kilogram organ we call brain. How does it do that? How does these billions and billions of neurons that are present in the brain, connecting trillions and trillions of connection, and how does it do that? It's probably the most interesting and most complex because without which we certainly would not have any identity ourselves. Fortunately for us, brain is compartmentalized. There's a part of the brain called hippocampus which is involved in cognition, memory. There's a part of the brain which is involved in feelings, emotions called amygdala. There's a part of the brain in the cortex which is involved in our decision making. And during the, the birth of a child, as early as nine weeks after, the brain begins to form, and small parts then begin to design itself to become hippocampus, amygdala, or cortex. So what Dr. Shiva Tole, who is the winner of the Life Sciences Prize for 2014, did, is to ask the question, how does this little organ, which starts at nine weeks, and continues to grow on till about 10, 12 years of her age, begins to make these distinct identities of the brain. She discovered certain important factors which were necessary and needed for part of the brain to become one organ, part of the brain to become different part of it, and therefore begin to understand how those connections are formed. Now why is it interesting? First of all, it's interesting, it's basic science problem. But more interestingly, if you begin to understand how these connections are made, you will also begin to understand when these connections are not formed. A child with autism, somebody with schizophrenia, or somebody with bipolar disease, the problem there very often is the connections are not formed as you might expect. And these little changes in connections then lead to these devastating diseases for people. So what Suva's work has done is to begin to understand these connections. And that's why the jury unanimously thought that this work is so fundamental, is so, so essential to understand the problems of the brain that they unanimously elected to have Suva as Dr. Tole as uh, our winner for the 2014 Life Sciences Prize. And I read the citation for her, for her significant contributions to our understanding of how the brain structure and circuitry are formed in the embryo. Her research uncovers common genetic mechanisms that control the development of hippocampus, cortis, and amygdala. Finally, I want to add that we bring also parity to the family of Subatole. Her husband got the prize four years ago, <laughs> and now there's going to be no argument in the family. <laughs> so congratulations, Suba, for the wonderful job that you have done. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Infosys Prize in Life Sciences, Professor Shubha Tole. I request Mr. Shibulal to join us on the stage as the anchor trustee for this category. And once again, I request Professor Amartya Sen to present the Infosys Prize in Life Sciences to Shubha Tole. I'd like to convey my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to the Infosys Science Foundation for creating these awards. They convey to the society at large, and in particular to students, to the next generation, that these areas are important parts of India's scientific progress and achievement. I thank the jury for having selected me for this honor, but it's not just me that's being honored. I stand here today because of my wonderful students and postdocs who have shared my enthusiasm for exploring the brain over the years and who have joined me. And we've had so much fun doing experiments and discussing together. I stand here today because of amazing colleagues in the Department of Biological Sciences at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. One could look far and wide 
and not find a group as supportive, as collegial, and as vested in each other's successes as the group that I'm privileged to be part of. I stand here today because of my scientific training from my postdoctoral mentor, Elizabeth Grove at the University of Chicago, and from my graduate advisor, Paul Patterson at Caltech. From Paul, I learned not just how to do scientific research, but also how to communicate it. He is no more, but I continue to learn from his example even today. I stand here today because of a special partnership that began during my graduate days at Caltech, my husband Sandeep. We've shared the highs and lows of our careers, the struggles and the triumphs. He's been my 24-hour friend over the last 25 years. I stand here today because of a springboard provided to me during my undergrad years at St. Xavier's College in the Life Science Department. St. Xavier's Mumbai, a wonderful place to nurture one's dreams. I've been inspired by amazing teachers from Xavier's, Sheila Donde, Alex Castellino, Lancy Pereira, and from Sophia College, Bombay, Medha Rajadaksh. These have touched my life and fueled my energy and my passion for biological research. And if I could emulate their example to some small extent, I would be so proud and so honored. And I stand here today because of my wonderful close-knit family that provided me a foundation for my independence and gave wings to my dreams. My brother, Vijudada, in the audience, who was a role model to me. My brother, Prashant, my friend and confidant during my growing years. My aunt, Ushamashi, in the audience, who's been more a friend than an aunt and to date at the age of nearly 80, shares my highs and lows and knows exactly which paper I'm working on. My children, Abhay and Nikhil, who are the joys of my life. And my parents, my father in the audience today, from whom I learned to have a long view of the road in life, from whom I learned that life's highs and lows may appear large in the immediate present, but things change from the perspective of a distant goal that must always be kept in sight. And I stand here today because of my mother, who is no more but with me in my heart. From my mother, I learned to break through perceived limits. From my mother, I learned to not limit one's dreams. From my mother, I learned that one should not limit what one learns by the syllabus one is handed, and that one should never let one's job description limit what you do in life. I stand here today because of these collective energies, and I am honored and inspired and humbled to have received so much.